Hello, everyone. Welcome to SIVA Talks. Thank you for joining us. We had technical difficulties, but you're all here with us now, and I'm very happy that you are here and that you stuck around and that you can uh, hear us and see us. So um, SIVA Talks is a series of live discussions with leading experts and practitioners from the logistics sector and beyond to share insights and best practices about different topics related to the supply chain and logistics industry. My name is Maria Villablanca. I, if you don't know who I am, I am the co-founder and CEO of the Future Insights Network, and I'm also a podcast host of the Transform Talks podcast on supply chain transformation. Now, I'm going to be moderating today's session, and we're going to be shortly introducing you to our guest. But before I do that, I wanted to tell you that SIVA Talks are featured in SIVA Insights, SIVA Logistics' Thought Leadership e-magazine. So today, we're going to be talking about leveraging data to mitigate supply chain risks. And I want to introduce you to our guest, Mikhail Rabo, who is the head of digital and innovation at SIVA Logistics. Say hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Sorry for, for being late and really happy to be there to have this chat with uh, Maria and you guys. Well, thank you for being here. Why don't you give us a little bit of a brief uh, vision of who you are and what you do there at SIVA Logistics? Sure. Um, so I joined Siva Logistics three years back, and um, so formerly working for for CNA CGM uh, Group, I've been there for a decade roughly. Also working for uh, Zbox and uh, Startup Incubator, um, and and what we're doing at at Siva Logistics was in was in my team is definitely um, supporting our business line, either it is air, ocean, ground, or contract logistics. Um, to face the new challenge that are coming there and to see how they could embrace technology, uh, new technology in order to in order to deliver better services for our customers now, but also tomorrow and, and within within few years as well, uh, seeing a bit more ahead of what is going to come. Well, thank you for that, Mikhail. Uh, so I, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what our objectives are for today's session. What we want to do is we want to raise awareness that implementing new technologies is imperative to strengthen the supply chains. We also want to showcase how data and new technologies are being used by logistics companies and supply chain service providers. And we want to help people prioritize investments that en enhance the supply chain resilience. So I want to set the seed a little bit. This has been a crazy couple of years. We are dealing with the pandemic. In some places, we're still dealing with it the U.S. port jam, ongoing conflicts in Ukraine, inflation, uh, high impact events. And uh, this has basically shown that a lot of businesses need to fortify their expanding supply chains. So I want to get to my questions. And before I do that, I wanted to make sure that I let you all know that you can ask questions as well. So you have an opportunity to ask questions and we'll be asking our guests these questions. But in the meantime, let me start with this. So my background is I host a podcast. I have a network of senior supply chain leaders, and I am having constant conversations with them about the current situation, you know, all the major volatility. And one of the things that they say is that they need to find visibility within their supply chain. So in this current situation, what do you think are the main challenges for companies in terms of supply chain visibility? Thanks. Uh, and I suspect that supply chain has been a key topic for for quite a bunch of year, and when I was formerly in CMA, that was already a huge topic. Um, the last two years event, uh, you mentioned some of them, but there is already others that have been coming in 2022. Um, they had the war in Ukraine, Shanghai lockdown, and others and others. And we know that despite those short ones, some more longer ones are coming also ahead of us. I'm thinking to the shortage of trucker in, in Northam, the new regulation with everything related with um, the green aspects of that and the fact that maybe some trucks will not be able to enter in the downtown in the coming years. So all these things will continue to impact um, the organization and the organization of the supply chain globally. Um, if we if we combine that with the fact that e-commerce is continuing, growing, 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 and then the standard of visibility are going to grow, grow, grow as well. So all this combined, we have crazy situation that will de that will obviously decrease our capacity to deliver good visibility and the demand will increase. So we definitely need to find solution because otherwise we're gonna be in, in a trouble. 
um, our customer, seeing them moving and adapting their supply chain or their organization behind that. We know that 10 years of lean management has drawn the inventory uh, down to just-in-time inventory. And so the stock were really, really low. And now with all these aspects, they are moving to just in case, meaning that hey, having a bit more, more stock. So we need to find solution. We need to ensure that we're going to be able um, to provide uh, instant and complete visibility to our customer uh, from the beginning, really down to when the good is going to be in the end of the final customer. So that definitely is a challenge which is there. And what is really cool for being head of digital is that there is now technology that will enable us to deliver it. Even if the complexity is going to grow, even if the disruption are going to be more and more present. And I really suspect that technology is there to support that. That couldn't be only technology because technology is just serving a strategy and there to enable process organization that will continue to be there. But definitely there is some, yeah, some good new insight that will be there to help us to deliver that. So you brought up technology. You just talked about technology. Uh, a lot of people are arguing that new technology is dramatically improving visibility across the supply chain. So what are your thoughts on that? So there are various aspects into that. Um, and we need to have a look at how the supply chain is moving. We were having moving from something very linear to something which is now network of supply chain. The number of factors is growing. And it meant that we will have more and more data sources, more and more people that we will need to connect. One of the key aspects is ensuring that we are able to ingest correctly all this data. We have huge amount of data, huge amount of data provider. And the data ingestion for me is one of the key challenge that is of, ahead of us. If we are not able to get this data, we will not be able to manage it, to leverage it, and to send it back to who needs customers, internal customers, whoever needs to get it. So data ingestion for me is the key. Without that, we cannot do anything. And we are all hearing about API, this kind of thing. is definitely the path to do that. So that for me, one key aspect, being able to connect all these supplier, provider into, into our system. There is another way to do that. We know that RPA is one of the buzzwords, but outside the buzzword is very important because that is a way to ensure that the data that we will be able to ingest is definitely going to be going to have higher turnout because that's going to remove that that's going to help us to have more productivity definitely, but that's also going to increase the quality because any mistake will will be removed gradually. So that would be my 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 second point. The last one, and again another buzzword, but but that's a true one as well, which is growing, not really mature, I suspect, is IoT. With IoT, is also a good way to get some data as well. So to get some data that we will that we will have in our system. And so we have the data there. We are now able to ingest into our system. Now we have to store them and to be able to manipulate in order to bring send them back at, at the right place at the right time. So Technology and data will be the two key enablers in order to be able to deliver that. They go hand in hand, of course. I, I want to ask our audience who are watching there if you have any thoughts on the kind of technology that either you've been using or that you've seen used in your companies that help build visibility, agility, or enhance any kind of resilience. And, and, and to my guest, um, we talked about data and technology working hand in hand together, but are there any particular technologies that you want to highlight that you think are very good at enhancing uh, resilience? So, yeah. And when we're talking about enhancing resilience, I, I mentioned that, uh, and I think there, this huge amount of data, and for instance, we were all talking about AI and so on, but before being able to do AI, we need, we need that data. And definitely AI will be a part that will that will play a huge role in the future. And uh, logistic has started as something like 6,000 years ago with the invention of the wheel. Um, and uh, I suspect that the second revolution of logistic will be data uh, in the coming in the coming years. Um, because 
that would be the only way for us and, and, and many data science, that would be the only way for us to manage clearly this huge amount of data to leverage it and to ensure that we will gradually be able to predict and to manage and, and to move from being reactive to being proactive. And, and, and that will be the game changer, definitely. You have that data, you are able to build some model on it, you're able to predict mm -hmm. what, has, what is not supposed to be predictable. And then you are moving from being very reactive from being someone that's going to be proactive and that will going to bring resilience into the, into the supply chain. And then we will be again in a position to move uh, a bit more to a more lean approach. You know, uh, what I was telling at the beginning of that, we move from something being very more lean and leaner, but just, uh, just in time. So having the smallest stock and smallest inventory. So saying, hey, maybe I need a bit more because on e-commerce, if you don't have the stock, you're losing the, losing the sell. So I need to increase my stock. And, and I suspect that we will be able to go back to something a bit more lean thanks to that, thanks to data, thanks to AI. So all the things about AI, machine learning and so on, it is not only buzzword, it is a reality that is coming. That is not mature yet, but it is something that is, that is coming. Now, you know, I, I've read in the comments there a couple of things. Someone talking about inventory management as, as technology, someone talking about the use of technology to ensure that sus the sustainability of the supply chain. You know, d I hear quite a lot about the use of technology to, to use that to enhance sustainability. W what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very huge one. Uh, not sure that we're going to have enough time to, to, to go through that, but no, definitely. Um, Technology is not going to solve everything, and yeah, what we it depends what we put behind technology. I'm not going to go into the uh, automation, into what the one or two PL are doing in order to reduce their carbon footprint. But technology is a very good way to optimize a lot of things. Mm. Uh, just one one example that that we have been doing at Siva, and uh, we have been able using um, using some data model. Being able to optimize the place of our and we have been looking at what were all the trips that we have been doing during the last x 12 months something like that and we said okay if i move my hub from this, this city to this location something like 100 kilometers i'm going to be able to reduce drastically the number of kilometers i will do to serve the same number of customers and that will leading us to a huge decrease in terms of co2 emission as well so Technology is not going to solve everything, but technology is going to be there in order to help us to optimize things that we are not able to optimize ourselves. And then that will have a huge impact um, on CO2 emission, for instance. But that's just one example, but we can multiply the example by hundreds, definitely. Well, uh, technology for technology's sake isn't going to solve the problem, which is exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think having data points that are able to give you visibility to assess risk is really what we're talking about here. Can, can you give us maybe from an inventory perspective, some examples of real time information that help companies alleviate supply chain and logistics risks? Yeah, uh, I was mentioning RPI and IoT just before, and you have two type of automation. Um, you have one in the in the warehouse now that are becoming uh, much more automated. And once you have more and more robots into your, uh, into your warehouse, it's much more easy than to get additional data. And, and once again, it's just a matter of data. And when you have, you're able to put some RFID um, within all your parcels, then you are able to know exactly what is coming in and out. So that's gonna, again, give you the capacity to get the data into your system. And then you can build all the model we are we have currently launched a POC with a startup and one of our customer in order to see how we could optimize two things um, working on two two examples the first one is to understand when the flow are going to come in, in order to optimize um, our workload in the warehouse because sometimes you expect you're going to have you're going to need 100 person and and maybe the things are going to be late and so you're not going to need the same amount of person and definitely having the data will help us to predict a bit more that portion. That's the first thing. The second thing is that our customer told us 
our supply chain are very tight and we need to be able to predict what will be the late shipment. Well, shipment will be late, what well, shipment are not going to be late. And that also something where you cannot guess. <laughs> so you need huge amount of data, you need to train your algorithm and that would be a portion. And we're starting to have some, uh, some good success into that. Okay. So the maturity is, is, is growing very quickly. And it, that's why for me, it's really the good time to invest into data. You were mentioning uh, what are the place where we need to invest. And definitely that's, that's a portion where we, we all collectively, I suspect, need to invest into that. Because the first results are there. There is still a long way to become more and more mm -hmm. perfect. But the first results are really impressive. You know, I, I've noticed there was a question here about process optimization tech tools focusing on risk and inventory management that'll give uh, a boost to the system on the global level. You know, given the issues with logistics really at the moment, you know, and the, the geopolitical issues, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, talking about, yeah, and if we, on, if we take a bit one step back uh, about that, I suspect that inventory is going to drastically change in the coming two years. And not going to say I'm not going to re reply directly to your question, but we need to understand that inventory one year, two years back was really what is my warehouse. Tomorrow, it's going to be completely different. Tomorrow is going to be what is in my factory, what, I'm trans what is currently being transported, what is in my warehouse, what is in my shop, what is in some maybe micro warehouse that we're going to organize in order to deliver B2C. So inventory itself is something that's going to completely change in the coming, I suspect, in the coming one or two years. And this concept of digital twin, all this kind of thing, um, are going to become a reality for inventory management. And inventory management is going to become from something where I'm going to look my stock in one piece at something that's going to be completely dynamic. And we're talking about network, that's exactly the inventory is going to become an, an aggregation of various inventory everywhere and going to be a moving it's, it's maybe not an official term but it's going to be a moving and dynamic inventory that is going to be the truth and yeah. once again we will need to be able to predict where to go in order to optimize our stock and then to be to getting slightly more and more lean into that management so that will have two steps. One step is being able to build that to serve e-commerce because that's the new normal. Um, second step is once this new normal will be a bit more stable, um, then we will be able to come back to a more lean approach. Um, so I want to ask you, because we've got about five minutes left. So I, I, I've seen quite a lot of uh, messages from people. Uh, and and there's quite a lot going on here, but I, I want to ask you, what does the future look like? Do you know what I mean? There is such a huge pace of change. I'm not I'm not going to ask you to make a prediction that I'm going to My yeah with a crystal goal. ball, <laughs> not not looking for that. But but I think with so much noise, you know, with so much information about uh, AI, machine learning, uh, tele someone mentioned telematics devices for monitoring and generating data to optimize operations, inventory management. How how do you make sense of all this noise? Yeah. Where do we start? Maybe that's the question. Where do we start? I, I, that thanks. That was what I was <laughs> I was willing to answer you. Uh, we need to we need to understand where to start. And I'm gonna repeat again, but I think it's very very key. Uh, we know the end game. The end game is that we're gonna have we're gonna use machine learning, all these kind of new things, in order to be able to predict and to behave is this much more complex world for logistics. So moving from linear to network is going to multiply the complexity by, I don't know, 100. So it's not something we're going to be able to manage ourselves with our brain and, and so on. So we will need machine learning in order to help us. Mm -hmm. So where to start now? Where to start is getting the data. Data ingestion, data ingestion, and a bit of data ingestion as well. So ensuring that you have the capacity to get this data quickly into your system, that you have the, the right data layer. Uh, we're talking about data lake, and now it's 
ocean of data become bigger and bigger. So you have the right technology with no SQL technology or whatever in order to be able uh, to uh, to get to get to manage those data. So ingest the data, invest in API to get the data inside, either RP or whatever. Ensure that you have the data there, and then you will be able to build the model. The more you have data, the more it will be easier for you to be able to do that. And don't forget that you need huge level of data quality. Well, without data quality, you're not you're gonna build on sand. And uh, and so all your prediction will be will be crap if you don't have the right level. So data ingestion and data ingestion with a huge data quality are the really first step to start with according according to me. Yeah. Okay, well here's here's another another question. Yeah. Uh, oh, someone's just mentioned digitization, autonomous solutions to analyze day-to-day -day operations, issue and define solutions. Uh, okay, here's another question with regards to all of this. What are the risks of not getting in control of your data, you know, in this fast moving world full of crisis, full of black swan events? I will say it's again, not a question of technology there. It's a question of strategy. It's a question of what is the importance of the supply chain in my business strategy? So what is the impact for me as, as a final customer of as a as a CEO of a company, as whatever, as a as a head of logistics in my company, if I'm not able to manage that, what is the impact? Once I have decided that, what is my level of maturity? Um, I am able to do that. I have, am I enough mature in my company in order to move forward? So that's a second very important question. The third question that we need to ask before doing that is am I in advance compared to the competition? Am I pretty late? And and that the question we're asking ourselves each time we're launching a project and then we're saying, okay, do I need to own this information or could I put that externally? Do I need to master the solution? So do I need to build it? Do I need to ensure that and am I able to build it or do I need to buy it? And 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 we, we call that the Macroberry strategy. But should I take it? Should I buy it? Should I own it or could I rent it? That as a service is becoming more and more important. So, but there is no one single answer. This this answer will be driven by your strategy, your maturity, and what is the time to market you are expecting to get. And this strategy could could evolve. So you can start with burying, and then you you're gonna go back to more internal when you will get the right maturity. Um. I'm being told that we have an opportunity here to prolong for another five minutes so we can get some more questions yes. in. So for those of you that are asking questions, by all means, ask more questions uh, about from our expert here. Um, I've got another question in the meantime with regards to um, creating the autonomous supply chain. You know, that is the holy grail, right? That is the end-to-end -end supply chain visibility issue. What are your thoughts there? How is that going to be possible? How soon is it going to be possible? And how important is data going to be in helping to uh, identify the uh, next stage of supply chain evolution? Uh, I don't want to fully disappoint the audience because I don't have my crystal ball for there uh, for that. <laughs> uh, no, that that's definitely hard to say. Uh, we are still far away from that because yes. we are still relying. Uh, quite extensively on human interaction, and um, and and that will continue. We we are working also uh, on a plan in order to reduce all the manual entry. One of our leaders say, "I don't want one single manual entry at the end of 2024 in in the system." Um, I hope he's not listening to us, but not sure that that's going to go this fast uh, because. Yeah, still the data quality that we are getting, and we are mentioning that is 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 not there. There is still some black spot in the logistic era, um, in some in some places in the world uh, that that we are still not having everything which is going to be autonomous. I was talking to you about API and so on. It is something which is happening, but we are still far away from having rich one hundred percent of maturity everywhere. So yeah, I'm not really able to give you the 
the full endpoint, and we know that not all the containers will be equipped by IoT. Despite we have seen this announced from uh, from Apagloid on that, uh, not sure that's going to become a standard. Um, not sure that we will have RFID on each and any parcels within the coming yeah few years. Uh, so if if I want to be on the safe side, I will say ten years. If I want to be very aggressive, I will say five. But uh, but definitely there is a, there is a long way to go there. Um, I want to ask you about, uh, well, someone's mentioned here about increasing visibility and transparency in the supply chain. Uh, but I want to close this session on this. You know, what are the parting thoughts with regards to the kind of questions that supply chain and logistics leaders need to ask themselves before investing in strengthening their supply chain resilience? Definitely, everything is starting from your strategy. Everything is starting from that. And... Uh, the question of the technology is going to come later. Um, and yeah, what is my strategy regarding e-commerce and what is also the impact of the supply chain um, of my suppliers and my business model? And, mm -hmm. and that should start from there. So that's the first thing. Um, after that, once again, and the question we're asking ourselves when we're doing digital project is a bit the same thing as what is my maturity? What is the level of investment also that I'm able to do? And that will drive, um, that should drive the action of saying, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not able to invest enough CapEx into that. So I'm going to go through service provider in order to support me into that, to help me to gain um, maturity. And maybe somehow I would be able, um, I would be able to, uh, I would be able to, make that a bit more internal and i would be able to to invest into that and there is no even one one single solution one single option um that will depend yeah every strategy my maturity and then i will decide to be more internal on some pieces go more external on other the last point which is key is don't think that if you do the investment now it's a one-off technology is evolving so fast and, and supply chain will continue to evolve. And we're mentioning the impact of the environment, of the sustainability in the supply chain. That will be a huge disruptor in the coming years. So will I be able in five years to maintain my level of investment and to ensure that I will still be at the state of the art? If I do huge investment now, and I will be lost in one or two years. So that's also where the logistics service provider are there because that's the earth of their job. So they, they will continue to invest every day, every year into that because that's our future and, and, and that's our core business model, definitely. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for contributing. And uh, this is all the time that we've we've got. I want to thank all of you that are watching for all of your questions and all of your hellos. Hello from everywhere that you are in the world. So it's fantastic to see you dialing in from all over the world to tuning in and from all over the world to watch us. Uh, I want to remind you to get more information from SIVA Talks because there's going to be a lot more uh, and you'll be able to see a lot more experts talking about a, a lot of great, great insights. Uh, so thank you very much and thank you for watching. Thank you to our guests. Thank you, Mikhail. Yeah, thank you, Maya, for, for having uh, hosted me and uh, thank you, everybody, for having uh, listening us. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye.